Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and welcome to week 41 of the Stash Buster Block series. Our block today is called Crystal Star and this is a sample here. This is an eight pointed star. I've made this one with a batik and a solid white. Um, it is an eight inch block and we make it with the center is a square and a square unit and then we have flying geese units so um, those are all things that we've done in the past and we do have points to match in this one so this one um, is a little bit more complex than the one we had last week but um, I think if you try this one out I think you'll be able to handle it and I think you'll enjoy it okay here are the fabrics you're going to need to make the crystal star block you're going to need four rectangles that are four and a half by two and a half inches. You're going to need two squares that are three inches square and then you'll need four squares that are two and a half inches. And then for your star colors you're going to need one piece that is one and three eighths inch and then you'll need eight pieces that are two and a half inches. Okay, on your, your colored two and a half inch squares, the ones that you're using for your star, you're gonna take the back of them and you're gonna draw a line diagonally from one corner to the next. Now this is gonna be a stitching line, so uh, you're not gonna see whatever you use to, to mark this. So you can use an ink pen, you can use a friction pen, you can use a pencil like I'm using, uh, a chalk marker, air soluble pen, water soluble pen, anything will work because this won't show. So um, you want to do that on each one of these. And this will be your stitching line when you do the flying geese units. So I'm going to do that and then I will come back and we'll start putting this block together. Okay we're going to start by making the square and a square unit and we're going to take the center piece of the star and we're going to fold it in half and find the center mark on two sides. What we're going to do, we're going to do the same thing we did last week. We're going to do two opposite sides. We're going to do these two sides, so these two sides on and then press and then we'll add these two sides. So what we want to do is to find the center of two opposite sides of the square and just finger press those to find those and we're going to do the same with the triangle. Fold these in half so that you've got the wrong sides of your triangle together and since mine's just a woven white cotton it doesn't matter which side I use. But I'm going to take that triangle and I'm going to tuck it right into the crease that I made on the square and then open it up and just pin it in place so it doesn't shift. And then I'll go ahead and do the same to this side. And be careful because this is your biased edge on the triangle so you don't want to stretch it out of shape so be gentle when you handle that piece. Okay now we can take it to the sewing machine. Okay, I have a 50 weight thread in my machine. It's in the needle and in the bobbin. And um, I'm going to use the standard 2.5 stitch length. And I have my quarter foot, my <laughs> and I have my quarter inch presser foot on. Okay, now I'm going to swing this around and do this side and I'm going to do the same thing. i got to make sure you have your raw edges lined up. And take my pin out there, I don't need that anymore. Now we're ready to press these seams open. Okay, now we want to press these open and we're going to just press them flat first and then press to the side. 
normally we press towards the dark this time we're pressing towards the the light it will just make the rest of the process go easier so oh, okay now we need to find the center of these two sides and the reason I don't find the centers all at the same time is because you have to press these to get the other two pieces on and then you just would probably just press out your crease mark that you make so I do it two sides at a time so I have my crease marks and take my triangles and do the same thing I'm going to find the center and these would be wrong sides together as I'm folding it and then that will have the right side will be out so that will face right sides together with this square and take my pen and pin that and then do this one and find my center again and tuck it in and then pin it in place okay now we're ready to sew those two sides okay I'm going to do the other side Now we have this and now we're ready to press again. And now I'm going to press it flat and press it open. Okay. Now I need to get rid of the dog ears because all they do is create bulk and bulk affects the precision of your piecing so I am going to cut them off but if you find they don't interfere with the work you're doing um, don't worry about it you have to do things that work for you okay so we have our square and a square unit and this is going to be surrounded by flying geese units so we're going to take our rectangles and see if I can separate one and I'm going to line up one of the squares and I'm, I've got the line drawn from one corner to the next I'm going to sew right along that line so that goes from the center to the, the opposite lower corner now I'm going to chain piece these together so I'm just going to start with one stitching right along the line I drew and then I'm going to pull it out just a little bit and take another rectangle and another square and line up my raw edges and then sew right on that line And I pull it out a little ways because you're going in at an angle here. You, you're, the triangle is, the corner is going in. And um, that seems to work better for me if I give myself a little space between them. They don't want, to, they won't jam up against each other that way. Okay. 
So flying goose units are similar to the square and a square unit in that you do one side and then you do your pressing and then you do the other side. Okay, now I'm going to come apart. And cut off my threads. So we have a bunch of units that look like this. And next thing we need to do is to cut off this outer triangle, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So I have my scissors here. Now you can do this with a rotary cutter. I tend to just use my scissors because my scissors are always right here. My rotary cutter is across the room. So we'll have that. So I'm going to go ahead and trim all of these and then we'll press. Okay, so now we need to press the flying geese open. So I'm gonna press it flat and then press the triangle out. So there is one half of a flying geese unit. So I'm gonna do that for all four flying geese units. Okay, now we're going to do the other side of the flying geese unit. Now on this one you want to make sure, like here's the base of the flying geese. Our flying geese is white in this one. Um, we want to make sure that the line we drew goes from the center to the opposite bottom corner. What you don't want to do is put it from the outer corner to the bottom center because when you flip this back you will have this going on. That's not what you want. You want it to look like this when you finish. So we're going to go from the top center to the bottom outer corner. So we're going to sew along that line and we're going to chain piece all of those together again too. Okay, I'm going to start stitching in the center and then go to the outer corner. And then move that one out of the way and do the next one. cut them apart and then trim off the outer corner. So once again I want to trim off this outer corner, this triangle here, and leave a quarter inch seam allowance. And that will when you open that up, then you have your flying goose unit. So I'm going to do that to the other three pieces. And then we'll be ready to lay out the block and then sew it together in rows. Okay, this flying goose unit. Just going to press it flat. And then press it open. And then here is our first flying goose unit. So we'll end up with four of these.
Okay, now we can lay out the block. We're going to have our center, which is the square in a square unit. And then the flying geese are going to go this direction. So we want the color to the center. So we'll put those all the way around. And then the white squares go in the corners. So here we go. So that makes the crystal star. So we're going to sew the rows together and then we will sew the, the rows into the block. So we're going to sew this first and then we'll add that. Now on this top row and the bottom row you don't have to match points. It's when you get to the middle row that we have points to match. And then when we sew the rows together we'll have um, points to match. So this first row we don't have to worry about that. So let's go ahead and take this to the sewing machine. Okay, so we're going to start with the first two pieces and I'm going to turn the flying geese up so that I can watch that seam. The seam is facing towards me so it won't want to pop up. So that is why I'm doing it that way. And I'll add the next row or the next square. And that goes here. is our first row. So the first row looks like that. Okay, second row. I'm not going to press this until I get all the rows together. The second row we have points to match. We have to match this point here on the flying geese to the point on the square and a square. So to do that I'm going to take a pin and put it right at the point on the back side going through the wrong side of the flying geese unit. So it should come out right at that point. And then I'm going to put it in right at the point of the square and a square unit. And then just slide those two pieces together. And make sure my pin is straight and then I'll pin those two pieces together. Okay, now we need to sew. And I'm going to stop with my needle down. I have to adjust my presser foot there. Okay, now where those two lines cross, I'm going to grab a pencil. where the two stitching lines cross here um, is what I want to watch and I want to go just to the right side of those two lines. I don't want to go through the, that intersection. I want to go right to the right side of it so that my points will show. And then I can finish the seam. And you know, if you don't get it right the first time, you can always take out those stitches and redo it. And I'm not sure on this one. Let me see. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So there I can see the point on both of those, on the um, flying geese as well as a square and a square. So we're going to do the same to this one. So I have my pen going through the back side of the flying geese right at the point and it's coming through the point of the uh, square and a square unit. So line these two up, pin them in place and then stitch and watch that intersection here. Let me get closer here. What I'm watching is the intersection where the cr stitching crosses. I want to stitch right to the right side of that stitching.
and slow down when you get to that joint, that point, so that you can uh, Here is row two. Now we'll do row three. row three so now let's press okay so now we have our three rows and we could see here I pressed all the rows to one side all the seams to one side um, if you're more comfortable pressing open you can do that too but these are all pressed to one side and what I did is I pressed this one out this one in and this one out so we'll go ahead and do the same here. So we're going to go ahead and press it flat first and then press open. And do the same here. And on this one, I want to press towards the center. Now this is the one that may fight you because you're going to have a lot of fabric going towards the center at this point, right at the intersection where all those points meet. So this is one um, that you have to kind of encourage to get it to go the way you want it to, um, which is another reason why a lot of people will just go ahead and press these seams open. I think this one, this one is going to fight me, so I'm going to kind of let that go for right now and deal with it later. And you can work with it from the back side, sometimes that helps. Because right now it's wanting to cut off the tip of this. Um, square there but um, and off the flying geese and I know those two are in good position because I checked them when I sewed them but that's kind of par for the course here so, okay now we need to sew the rows together and since our seams are going in opposite directions um, these seams will go together well the two outer seams but we have these two points to match so I am putting the pin in through the back of the flying geese right at the point and coming out and into the point of the square and a square unit and I'm going to line that up and pin it and then we're ready to sew. And if you want to you can pin these um, seems to. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm pinning mine at a diagonal. So we're going to pin this side. Okay, then we'll go to the sewing machine. Okay, now we're going to sew this seam. removing my pins as I go. Okay, I'm getting close to the point, so I'm going to watch that and stitch right to the outside of it, the right side of it.
their first two rows together and we're going to add the third row and okay for this row I am going to do the same with matching the points I'm going to go through the flying geese and then through the square and a square unit and line up my pin and then pin it in place and then we're ready to sew. In my point. And I got this seam to match and align my raw edges again. Okay, let's see how this came out. Okay, I'm going to press this flat and then press it open. And there we go. There we have the crystal star block. Here on my design wall I have four of the crystal star blocks um, pinned up there and all four of them are a different color. I just wanted to try this design out in different colors to see what they would look like. Uh, this one is also a symmetrical block so it doesn't matter which way you turn it the block is going to look the same. You're going to get the same kind of a layout. So this is one that you know, of course you can lay out in different ways. You can use alternate blocks, you could use sashing, you could pair it up with a different block, um, you could stagger them, um, whatever you like to do with this one. You can make them all the same color, you can make them all different colors, you could just use a color combination of two or three different colors if you want, you know, just whatever you'd like to do. So this is what it looks like when you have a couple of them all together in one setting. I hope you enjoyed this video on the crystal star block. I think this makes a real pretty star block and um, it takes a little bit more time because there's more pieces to it but it's still I think beginner friendly as long as you can do flying geese and the square and square unit I think you can do this one pretty easily. So if you like this video, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to click the notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.